Which Harry Potter TV show seasons will be good? HBO are making a Harry Potter TV show. It is official. It is confirmed. It has got a showrunner and everything. Now, do I think it's a good idea? If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. But the idea is each season of the show will focus on a different book. And that's going to give them far more time to go into all of the details of the book including those that the movie missed out. So based on that, I'm going to rank how good I think each season of the show will be, starting with The Philosopher's Stone. Now, if they call this the Sorcerer's Stone because HBO is an American company, I will be furious. I think viewership wise, this season will perform well. I think lots of people are gonna tune in to see what it's like, how different it is from the films. And on that note, I don't think it'll be that different from the films. One big issue with the whole we can tell a story much closer to the books angle of the show is that the first three movies were really close to the books. Save for a small dragon plot here and a death day party there and Peeves of course. We get pretty much everything from the book that's important in the movie. And I think the same can be said for all three of these. That said, a TV show about a wizard when he doesn't cast a single spell in the entire book, which is a book fact as well. I know a lot of people know about the movies, but also in the book. Unless you count the accidental spells he casts when he's growing up or when he's waving his wand in Ollivander's. But yeah, no spells. Anyway, the stakes in this book are pretty low compared to where they eventually get to in the later books. And apart from Peeves and Norbert, there's not a lot I'm desperate to see that we don't already get in the film. That said, seeing what they do with the castle aesthetics and the music and the costumes and a brand new cast, I'm intrigued, but also nervous. Like it could be amazing, but it could also be really jarring and disappointing. So I'm gonna go middle of the road and give this one a C in terms of how good I think it will be as a season. If you've seen my other Harry Potter ranking videos, you'll know I don't care much for The Chamber of Secrets. It's my least favorite book and movie. I think the pacing is slow, the plot isn't terribly gripping, and it's just a typical whodunit, except it's a, a school for magic. And it's also not that rich with subplots, honestly. Like, I don't know how many episodes they're planning per season for this show, but my guess would be maybe eight per season at least. And so I just sort of think the Chamber of Secrets, which already has pacing issues, trying to stretch out the whole who opened the Chamber of Secrets arc across eight episodes while keeping it interesting and intriguing and engaging, gonna be tough. Like, beyond taking an entire episode to show us things that could be a single scene, I think this one's really gonna struggle with its pacing. Like, at least the first season, based on The Philosopher's Stone, can spend a lot of time building the world, showing us the castle, establishing and setting the scene, diving into the new wizarding world. But by season two, that's already gonna be established, so I don't know how they're gonna really make this riveting television across a whole season. And for that reason, I'm gonna give it a D for season two. How they're going to compete with Afonso Cuarón's masterpiece, I have no idea. Don't even bother, just skip this season, go straight to the Goblet of Fire. In reality though, Prisoner of Azkaban is my favourite of the Harry Potter films, and I am nervous, much like I am for the Chamber of Secrets, that trying to stretch this book out across eight or more hours of TV could really damage the story. Like, Goblet of Fire onwards, there's so much content in this book. It's gonna be easy to keep it engaging and well-paced and interesting while staying true to the books. But these books are barely 300 pages long. What The Prisoner of Azkaban can do at least is spend more time setting up Harry's relationship with Lupin, give us more of a backstory about the Marauders, but we're talking about something that made a two and a half hour movie being stretched into eight plus hours of TV and I don't know if there's five hours of Marauder's backstory for us to really dive into. The subplot with Buckbeak's trial, again, can only be stretched so far. So as one of my favorite books, my favorite movie, in theory, I should be excited to get the TV adaptation of this, giving us a truer reflection of the story. But since it's the best Harry Potter film, I'm just afraid they're gonna taint it. And that leads me to give the third season of the Harry Potter TV show a C ranking. And honestly, my rankings have not been very high so far, which begs the question, Fantastic Beasts was supposed to be five movies long, but it was such a flop that they ended it after three. So what if we get three hugely underperforming seasons of this TV show? Will they just cancel it? Because season four, The Goblet of Fire, seems to be where things will get interesting. So speaking of the Goblet of Fire, this is a thick boy. 636 pages of Wizarding World brilliance. And this is where I start to get excited about the TV show because 
Telling us we're getting a truer account of the books means nothing with the first three, since the movies were pretty true to the books. But the Goblet of Fire... We had to lose a lot from this. So much of the Quidditch World Cup, way more tension building to find out who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire, the Spew storyline, everything with Ludo Bagman, Dobby's role that he plays, and Winky, and the backstory of the Crouch family. There is so much in this book that I missed from the film, and the Goblet of Fire is not inherently a bad movie, but I am always bitter when I watch it because of how much they left out. So this is the TV show's opportunity to grab us. But with more content comes the potential for more pacing issues, but this time in the other direction. Because while I think the earlier books to TV show adaptations might struggle with not having enough content to stretch out, I'm worried about how they balance all the content in these later books. They need to know when to slow down and let the show breathe in character moments, but also balance that with the high intensity moments like the Triwizard tasks and Voldemort's resurrection. I just, I really hope they get the balance right because if they give it the resources they should, this might be one of the greatest seasons of television ever. That's a big if, but if you can't tell, this is the part of the series where I start to think a TV show might be an okay idea. So we're gonna go A tier for the Goblet of Fire because this could be fantastic. So the Order of the Phoenix, when it comes to the book and the movie, I actually feel the opposite about it with how I felt about the Goblet of Fire. Where the Goblet of Fire had a fantastic, well-paced, really intriguing book, I actually think the Order of the Phoenix was badly paced. When it was good, it was amazing. Some of the greatest moments in the entire series happen in this book, but when it was bad, it was so dull. Did we really need so many different scenes of Harry's train wreck of a relationship with Cho? And so much of the book is repetitive, right? Harry being frustrated in his dreams that he can't open the door at the end of the mystery corridor. Harry being angry at everyone, for everything, all the time. The pacing of this book feels so off, but the movie did a brilliant job of cutting what it needed to, but keeping the core parts of the story. It was epic when it needed to be epic, and it used montages fantastically to tell these repetitive storylines without too much focus or time or attention. So I'm a little bit worried the TV show might dilly-dally in those slower parts a little bit. Like, I'm all for an episode that has a side plot that shows Harry and Cho's relationship going south. In fact, I would like to see their scene in the tea shop. And I do think the show can go even deeper into Umbridge being the worst person ever. It can show even more of the worst sides of her. But there's just so much fluff in The Order of the Phoenix that I don't want the TV show to get bogged down in it. But I do want an entire extra long episode dedicated to that big finish at the Ministry. Complete with the weird brain room that sticks to Ron, more context around the time turners and the archway that Sirius falls through, and at least a 45 minute scene of Voldemort dueling with Dumbledore. So trying to balance those things, the good parts and the bad parts, I'm gonna give this a B tier. Like it has the potential to be a blinder of a season with the best parts of the books, but there's also so many traps they can fall into that could bring the whole thing down. Half-Blood Prince is the best book, hands down. And controversially, I know a lot of people don't love the movie, but I really, really do. Some of the criticisms it gets, that it's too much of a teen comedy with Harry's Felix Felicis scene and all the drama around teen romance, McLagan being comic relief. I honestly think that movie balances perfectly the darker stuff of needing to get Slughorn's memory of telling Voldemort about the Horcruxes and the journey to the cave and Dumbledore's death and all the tension around Malfoy's descent into complete desperation. The film perfectly balances those things with lighter moments that feel fun and jovial because it's really important, particularly in this instalment, to remember that with the weight of the world on our main characters, they are still kids. The stakes are so high, but they still have crushes and they want to be popular and win Quidditch and do well at school. That balance is so important. The reminder that they are literally still children is so important before the big finale in the Deathly Hallows. That said, as much as I do like the film, there is so much that they missed out. Voldemort's backstory, such an important detail to gloss over, one of the best parts of not just this book, but the whole series. And I think slowly revealing those through Harry's private classes with Dumbledore across the season is a great way to build suspense and tension and raise the stakes over the eight or 10 or however many episodes we get. Plus a TV show gives us way more time to develop Harry's relationship with Ginny so that hopefully 
we don't get any horrific shoelace scenes. So I do think of all the books, this one has the most potential to add stuff that they missed out in the films to really make it truly excellent. And so for that reason, I'm gonna give it an A rating because it's my favorite book and I wanna see it done well. You know how a major criticism for the Deathly Hallows Part 1 movie is that it's mostly just running? If they're doing it as a TV show, does that mean we're going to get at least four episodes of just the characters running? Seriously though, I actually think this is going to be a really interesting one for the writers to balance and to pace because in the book there is only 24 hours between the trio escaping from Gringotts with Hufflepuff's cup and Harry defeating Voldemort at the very end. So are they gonna have six months of hunting Horcruxes crammed into maybe five episodes and then three episodes showing the last 24 hours? Because I feel like the Gringotts heist needs to be its own episode or the majority of one. And then the first half of the battle has to be its own episode because it inevitably needs to have Harry going to the forest and the cliffhanger at the end of the episode has to be Voldemort using Avada Kedavra on Harry and everybody thinks he's died. And if that's the cliffhanger, it means we need a whole other episode for the last half of the battle. One thing I am excited about is with more time, they can dive into Harry's sacrifice in the forest, protecting his peers in the same way that his mother's sacrifice protected him. And they can take the time for Harry in his final duel with Voldemort to explain Dumbledore's plan so that the viewer gets all the brilliant details and those dialogue exchanges that we get from the book. Plus, if we can please just get a mortal death for Tom Riddle as a human man, that would be fantastic. Truly though, The Deathly Hallows feels like it's the book that lends itself most to the TV format. Like, it has seven or eight big standout moments that lend themselves to their own episode of TV, right? The Seven Potters, the Ministry Heist, Godric's Hollow, Malfoy Manor, Gringotts, and the two halves of the battle. And so for that reason, I'm gonna give The Deathly Hallows an A rating because this could be done exceptionally well. So long as they don't give it the Game of Thrones treatment with the final season. So these are my final rankings in terms of how good I think they'll be as TV seasons. Let me know if there's any you disagree with down in the comments. Like the video if you liked it. And if you wanna see me ranking each of the Harry Potter movies, you can check that out in this video here.